Welcome everyone, I'm Dean Phillips, Worldwide Tech Lead for Automotive at AWS. Hi, I'm Stefano Marzani, Principal Specialist Solutions Architect Autonomous Vehicles at AWS. With now over 300 million connected vehicles on the road globally, with more being added every day, and each one having at least 100 million lines of code or more, the complexity is crazy. This is a great thing because cars are defined by the software within them and not the hardware that takes so many cycles to refresh. But that can also be more challenging because of the need to constantly update the software with minimal impact to the customer. Yes, the software-defined vehicles of the future needs to rely on sophisticated over-the-air updates to help OEMs address hundreds of connected vehicle use cases, like uh, infotainment content uh, or fleet management, predictive maintenance, uh, personalization, data monetization, geolocalized content. Uh, and the use cases go on and on. And it's, it's really like a huge wave that needs to be managed, isn't it, Dean? Well, that's exactly why we're excited to have our customer Sibros here to showcase their deep connectivity platform for orchestrating over-the-air software updates with real-time data logging, fleet and service management, diagnostics, and AI-powered analytics. Sibros platform also securely manages all in-vehicle software and data between vehicles, networks, and AWS Cloud to ensure safe software updates, a critical aspect to the software-defined vehicle. So with that, let's jump right into the demo of Sibros deep connectivity platform built on AWS. In this video, I will provide a brief introduction to Sibros's deep connectivity platform. Here is a portal view uh, and the dashboard of all the vehicles that are being managed by Sibros. Uh, we can actually create uh, smaller groups of vehicles if we want to, and we can look at different time frames of performance. Um, in this, we are also a global platform, so we show a view of all the vehicles based on their current location. We also provide information about warnings or fault conditions that have occurred on these vehicles through our deep logger product. We can help our customers manage their data consumption uh, over cellular. We can create customized widgets of information, like um, of all our EV vehicles, how many miles have been accumulated uh, with electric energy, how much gas has been saved, and how much money has been saved. We also provide information about software rollouts, uh, deployment success rate of those um, software rollouts, and the average completion time for a rollout. Speaking of rollouts, let's create one. So I'm gonna go to the vehicle tab, and we're gonna create a new vehicle group for a software rollout. So I'm gonna hit that new vehicle button. Um, we're gonna give it a name, so demo group six slash six. Uh, we'll, we'll select our Thunderbolt vehicles for a software update. Um, and I'm gonna create a new vehicle group. Once that vehicle group has been created, we go to the deployments tab, we go to rollouts, and we're gonna create a new rollout of software. We'll give it a name, demo rollout 6.6. Six. Uh, the package, the Thunderbolt package, uh, we're gonna deploy version 101 to those groups of vehicles. We're gonna actually start it immediately. Uh, the group of vehicles, which we just created, we're gonna add those. We're gonna make this a moving window type of a rollout. We could also do it as staged. Uh, the delivery type, we're gonna choose Wi-Fi, but we could choose cellular, or we could do a combination of both. And then last, since this is a demo account, I'm gonna be the demo account owner approver. We offer a role-based access control so we could customize this um, and add multiple levels of approvers, which would normally go into a production type of rollout. I'm gonna create the rollout and as the approver, I will approve it, and then we will start the rollout. Once the rollout starts, we provide a very detailed and comprehensive logging solution. At the highest level, um, as the vehicle software rollout takes place, we can see what vehicles have received the request, which vehicles are in the process of downloading. Once the package has been downloaded um, and the update of the vehicle starts, we can see that uh, information. Uh, we can provide information um, to on any vehicle or the fleet of vehicles. In this case, if we looked at this particular VIN, we can view the deployment logs. 
Um, here you'll see that it's um, passed the precondition check and we've moved to the updating of the targeted ECUs. This Thunderbolt package has us updating 10 unique ECUs in the vehicle, and we can look at the detailed logs for any one of these. So if I click here, you'll see that um, we're updating the application and calibration blocks. Uh, if we look here, you'll see that the entire programming sequence is logged and sent to the, our portal for future viewing. Um, you can see the commands such as EDU tester present to the ECU being reset, to gaining security access, to erasing the current memory, and then downloading the new image to the targeted ECU. Um, and then finally, the ECU gets transitioned to success. So we provide full traceability on every VIN, every ECU, every sequence of events that takes place will be available in the Cibros portal. Next, let me move to the All Vehicles tab and show you uh, one of the vehicles. So we had that dashboard view of the fleet of vehicles. Here we have a dashboard for each individual vehicle. And so we can see detailed information about the performance of this vehicle. Uh, but let me just move here to the shared dashboard and we'll look at the powertrain information. So in this case, we're going to change the template to the default powertrain. You can see that we have the current speed, the motor temperature, the battery management system, the state of charge, an overview of the battery management system um, with multiple signals that we're graphing. Um, we provide high precision timestamps. Um, on uh, every time an event uh, happens on the vehicle and we capture that event, we're going to um, create that timestamp and that allows us to replay this information um, and viewing of, of the details of what's actually occurring with um, systems or subsystems on the vehicle. We can change what data elements we want to log by simply going to the configs tab. And so we can change this on one vehicle, a group of vehicles, or a fleet of vehicles. Here we've unconditionally, we're always logging information from the motor control unit, the drive unit, thermal status and the battery management system, but we set up a conditional logging statement that says when the vehicle's speed is greater than 10 kilometers per hour, only then will we be logging information from the inertial measurement unit. And this makes sense because we're, we're not interested in logging uh, handling characteristics of the vehicle at low speeds or where the vehicle is not moving, but only when the vehicle starts moving. We can also change the time intervals in which we sample the data. So all of this is highly configurable through the deep logger solution from Cibros. Thank you.